Welcome to Oil Slip 101. My name is Joe and I'm going to walk you through how to fill out your oil slip. We're going to get started on the front of the slip on the left hand side. First we have the name. The name is usually in reference to the owner of whatever it is being sampled or it could be in reference to a company, garage, FBO, etc. that is sending in the oil sample. Next we have the address. If you would like us to send more kits your way, be sure to include the address so we know where they need to go. Beneath address we have the contact. If the account is already under your name, you can leave the contact field blank. If a company, garage, or FBO is sending in a sample, then the contact needs to be the name that we are addressing the report to. Below contact, we have the email. Be sure to include an email address if you would like to get the report as quickly as possible. If email is not an option, we can also send you a hard copy or fax you the report. Next up, we have the engine, make, and model. If you are not sure what make or model of engine you have, we can at least give our best guess based on the vehicle year, make, and model. We ask for the engine, make, and model, and information about the vehicle so we can provide averages specific to the engine type. Keep in mind that some vehicles have more than one engine option for the year and model of a particular car. So if you aren't sure of the engine make and model but you do provide the vehicle information, we can at least give our best guess and plug in averages for comparison. If we need to update any of the clerical details, we can always do so. Just reach out via phone or email and be sure to read the fine print regarding sample containers here at the very bottom on the left hand side. If you would like us to send more kits your way, don't forget to check the box below. Now we're going to switch gears and look at the right hand side of the slip starting with unit ID. For most folks, this ends up being the year and model of whatever it is being sampled. However, you're going to want more specificity if you are, say, a shop that has a lot of vehicles come through that you're sending in samples from, or even if you're just an owner that owns more than one of the same thing, this is the field where we encourage creativity. Use of nicknames or a customer name, using something specific so that way we can be sure to keep all the sample history for a particular car, truck, etc. in the correct spot. Next up, we have the sample date. This is particularly important as we want to keep all of your samples from a particular engine or transmission in the correct chronological order. On the slip, you can see options for tracking miles, hours, or kilometers. This can really be anything you want though. So if you're tracking laps, for example, or events, that's fine too. Just let us know on the slip if it is something other than miles, hours, or kilometers. And keep in mind that we can only track one interval type at a time. So instead of having miles on engine and then hours on oil, keep it consistent in both fields. Next up, we have oil added between changes. Now, this is in reference to what you needed during the oil run. We're not interested in sump capacity. We want to know what you need to add during the oil run that can speak to whether or not the elements are diluted by fresh oil or if it looks like you might have an increase in oil consumption based on how much makeup oil you needed for this oil run, say compared to previous oil runs you've sampled in the past. Now on to the oil type. This is where you want to note the weight 
or grade of whatever oil it is that you're sampling. However, we want to know more than merely the weight. So instead of just putting, say, 5W30, for example, put the brand and the weight. The reason being, we want to know if, say, for example, certain elements, such as sodium, speak to contamination being present, or if it looks like it's likely just additive depending on the brand that you put in. So if you added, for example, Mobile One 5W30, write exactly that, and that way we can have specs for a 5W30 oil in place and let you know if we find evidence of contamination in the oil additives. Lastly, on the front side, we have fuel type. Don't skip over this, especially if you are adding leaded fuel. Blow-by from leaded fuel can result in a high lead level in the used oil sample, so we want to know if any of the lead we find in the spectral exam might be from the fuel you're running. And if there's an absence of any information regarding the engine make model or vehicle year make and model, we can at least plug in some generic averages if we know this came from a gasoline or diesel engine. Now let's go to the back of the oil slip. At the top, you can see fields in reference to payment info. Below payment info, you can see several questions on the back of the oil slip, starting with, was the oil changed when the sample was taken? If you have not changed the oil when you took the sample, we'll be sure to let you know if you should based on factors such as wear levels and contamination. When we ask about interest in extended oil use, we're asking if you would like to run the oil longer than you currently are. Now, this is not in reference to calendar time, but in terms of actual use. So, for example, if you're going 3,000 miles between oil change intervals, and you check yes for an interest in extended oil use, then we'll offer a mileage, hours, kilometers based recommendation about the additive question. We are asking about the presence of any additives not already in the oil to begin with. Instead, we're asking about any aftermarket products you might have used. Common additives would be Lucas oil stabilizer, an engine flush, restore, etc. Below additives, we have the TBN. Knowing the amount of active additive present is particularly helpful if you would like to go longer between oil change intervals. The comment or question field. Think of this field as a place for you to tell us why it is you're sampling. What problems are you trying to hunt down? Do you have any suspicions of a problem? Or if you're simply looking for a checkup of the engine, that's a good thing to note as well. Feel free to note any modifications or recent repairs, anything at all that you feel might impact the wear levels, or if you have expectations of us finding contamination, really anything at all that can lend context to the results. If you need access oil slips for aircraft, marine, transmission, or industrial equipment, just go to the link at the bottom of the slip. That wraps up Oil Slip 101 for gas and diesel engines.